Good afternoon and welcome to the Glens Falls Civic Center where today the Cannoneers play host to the Chargers of Turner Carroll for the Federation Class C Championship. This is Spectator Sports. I'm Mark Cady. With me, Doug Schoonmaker. On the cameras tonight, Carmen DiDonato and Dave Plew. Doug, we don't know anything at all hardly about this Turner Carroll team, except that they're big. No, they're, uh, they've got a bunch of big kids out there, and they predominantly, I understand, like to run the basketball, Mark, which may fit right into Waterloo High's plans. Uh, one big advantage the Cannoneers might have is that Turner Carroll had to play a game yesterday. Mm -hmm. This is their second game in as many days. Water Lead has had a whole week off to prepare for this ball yes. game. So we're just going to have to wait and see what happens. I'm sure both ball clubs want this very much. It's the final game of the season for both clubs, win or lose. This is it. Uh, one thing I can see to you, Water Lead has a distinct advantage, and that's in the bench. Yeah, Waterfleet does have a good-sized bench, and that could be one factor in this right, ball game. Turner also. Carroll team gets in problems foul-wise. Uh, you know, they've only got three guys on the bench, so uh, that could play a big, big role in tonight's contest. In a game like this, also, Mark, uh, the fact that both teams like to run, teams do tend to get into foul trouble. It depends right now on how much the referees are going to let them play. Uh, we know nothing about these two officials either, including their names. All I know is that they're at state-level competition. Uh, neither one is from the Buffalo area or Section 2, so <laughs> the Capital District area anyway. Uh, so they're unfamiliar with both teams, which could be a good uh, could deal. benefit both could teams. Could benefit eh? both teams. The lineups have just been introduced. We'll add that the Chargers of Turner Carroll are coached by Farjai Ars Ansari and assisted by Al Young. The Cannoneers coached by George Mardigan, assisted by Glenn Westfall. And uh, the Water Valley crowd is getting into it early here. Water Valley with a good crowd here tonight. I look for number 30, Damon James, uh, Mark, to be their leading scorer and their go-to man during the big part of this ball game for Turner Carroll. Well, they've got a 25-point-per-game score. And I expect you see the water, I, I expect to see Waterville come out in that basic triangle in two that they use to shut down uh, one of the most prolific scorers in Section 2, T. Duncan of Rensselaer. Well, I've done it well the last couple of games.
Count the basket and he's fouled. Follow number 44, Kevin Sanders. And no, Turner Carroll give, wants timeout. They're gonna give that foul to Ortiz, Mark, number 25. Oh, uh, take that back. As Uban went in, uncontested that time, got a little shove in the back, scored the hoop, and Ortiz drew the foul. The Cannoneers now lead by five, it's nine to four, and a good reaction by the Water Elite fans. Real good, you could tell Water Elite's here in force tonight. As Turner Carroll calls timeout with 4.55 to go. Uh, he wants to try to regroup his kids a little bit here and say, look, we're supposed to be the team that runs the ball. That's been their, their game plan the whole year long. Uh, and they haven't been able to run it at all. The Cannoneers with good defensive full court yes. pressure have really rattled the Chargers right now. We'll see if they can get back into their flow of things. Cannoneers doing a good job offensively and defensively. And the Chargers have missed a couple of easy chip shots underneath. I don't know whether it's a little bit of maybe the nerves or, or what it is, but they've missed a couple of easy yeah, chip shots have. early in this ball game. Yep. 4.55 left in the first quarter. Five point lead by the Cannoneers. Still a lot of ball game left. Uban at the line. He will try to convert the three point play. And as we said earlier, the, the fouls against the teams could uh, play an important part in this ball game. Right now, the Chargers with four against them. And they've only got three players right now on the bench. On the so bench. And one, player with, subs can and one player with two, the two guard with two fouls. Good pressure once again by the Cannoneers in that full court zone press. And we'll have a foul on Williams. It's going to be on Williams. I believe on Williams. Let's see. Sanford made a good move that time toward the hoop. Was fouled by Williams underneath before the shot. So it'll be Charger ball out of bounds. And once again, they're trying to blast the ball inside, but they're missing the easy chip shots. Sanford's turnaround jumper way short that way time. Way short. Though. Brown tried to say it was tipped by Cannoneers, but he was the last one to touch it. Good look to Nelligan. Tough shot in traffic, count it. Well, Nelligan even made things a little harder for himself by putting the ball, on the, floor. The ball on the floor and going right into the traffic. He had about an eight foot jump shot, but he still converted. Now he brings one. it up, pulls up, shoots, won't go. Rebound Ortiz. Coach Mardigan not real happy with Nelligan that time. Now Nelligan had Fruscio wide open on the left side that time. Should have dished off for the easy two. And an offensive foul is going to be called against Williams. As he backed his way in to the defensive player. And that'll be his second. That's two on Williams. All right, substitution. Number 22, Terrence Hudson into the game as Alfredo Ortiz takes a break. We got a five-second call. Credit that to the Cannoneer defense that time, Mark. No, Every no, we didn't get the five-second call. We got the timeout Time beforehand. Timeout before. Well, it's the second time out that the, the Chargers have had to call right here in the first quarter uh, with four a game. Doesn't leave you many left. Doesn't leave him. <laughs> Simple math will tell you he's only got two left. 341 left in this first quarter. And the Cannoneers lead by eight, 12 to four. I had a chance to talk to State Chairman Bill Higgins before the game tonight. And he came up with an interesting little sidebar to, to this afternoon's contest as this is the C Federation Championship. Right following this will be the B's and then the A's at, not, or at, at nine tonight. And the winningest percentage in this Federation tournament is held by the Catholic School Athletic Association. They don't have a team in this Federation Cup Finals. We have th three public schools, one Alliance School, the Independence, and then two PSALs, a public school athletic league out of 
New York City. So again, they're going to try to pound it inside. Sanford won't go. Rebound, Nelligan. Outlet to Uban. Gives to Birmingham. Down a lane. He's fouled. Foul is going to be on Brown. That'll be his first. Foul on number 2-3, Gerald Brown. Well, we know the Cannoneers like to run. But we had heard and that the Chargers like it. to run, and, and the Cannoneers have been running all night. All night, six minutes into the game. <laughs> Five minutes into the game. Birmingham makes the first. Birmingham will get the bonuses. It was awarded two because he was shooting. But more importantly, that is the fifth Charger foul, and Cannoneers are in the bonus the rest of the half. And Birmingham gets the shooter's roll. Cannoneers win, leading by 10. Big factor, that'll almost be eight minutes, Mark, that the Cannoneers will be in the bonus and a good opportunity to stretch this lead. We got another foul on number 23, I believe, Gerald Brown. His second personal. I believe Birmingham's going to do the shooting here. Birmingham or Williams? I don't know who they said he fouled. Uh, unless they change where they shoot from, it's going to be Birmingham. <laughs> so Williams lined up in a rebounding block. Birmingham at the line. He'll get one on one. He makes the first, he'll get the bonus. Nails them both. Cannoneers have opened up a 12 point lead, the biggest lead of the night. All alone. Tip in by number 30, James. Once again, Mark, that tentative shot underneath the hoop. The little chip shot was missed. Williams with a little chip shot and won't get the roll. Nelligan keeps it alive to Uban. Gives it back to Williams. Up off the glass, won't go. Williams gets it back. Won't go. Still can't get it to go. Birmingham up off the glass. Count it. Four offensive rebounds that time, Mark, before the shot finally went in. The Cannoneers really doing a job really on the Really doing a job. There's a foul on Fruscio. His first team third. Chargers will inbounds the ball from the side. Rebound Birmingham. Shot off the glass by Hudson. Birmingham for three. Won't go. Fruscio gets the rebound. Smallest player on the court that time, Mark, with the offensive Fruscio board. Fruscio pumps up to three. Won't go. Rebound Birmingham. Ball stolen away. Williams kept it alive. Good that time. Now it steps. Into the game, number 21, Shondell Dupree for the Chargers. I really can't believe, Mark, with the size of this team, this Charger ball club, that the Cannoneers are doing such a great job. On the boards. Off, on the offensive on and the defensive glass. boards. It's been a uh, Cannoneers show on the glass. Put back by number 44, Kevin Sanford.
127 left. Uban pulls up, hits it. That's a Uban patented move right there. Yeah, that's the first we've seen him do that tonight. I'm sure he'll do it many more times. The Cannoneers with a 12 point lead, and they get the basketball. Now, credit the defense with the turnover. Substitution number 30, Brian Carroll, comes in for Bill Williams. Nice hand for Williams. Uban with a dish down in Elegant. Count it. We're under a minute now with uh, the Cannoneers on top, 22 to eight. Shot missed by Ortiz, rebounded by Carroll. Frushow to Carroll. No, no, they're gonna say he walked, I think. Yes. Ortiz shot that time was way off the way mark. Way off the mark. The Cannoneers did an excellent job getting the ball up court. Carroll knocks it out of bounds. Inbound to James. Looks down low, up and off the glass. That was a good Ortiz. shot by Ortiz that time. Used the glass well. It seemed like earlier in the ball game they were trying to just dump that ball, baby it into the hoop, not use the glass at all. All the shots were short. Canada's a hole for one. We're down to 16. Birmingham muscles it in. What a shot by Birmingham. I don't know how that went in, Mark. Unbelievable shot. Shot James will not count. No basket. Range, no, no basket. Good. The end of one. Cannoneers on top, 24 to 10. This is Spectator Sports. We'll be back in a minute. Not what I expected to see. Not what I expected to see at all. We're back. Second quarter. Cannoneers up 24 to 10. Not quite the kind of game we expected, Mark, at all. Not at all. Uh, not from the buildup, anyway, that we've been getting on these Turner Carroll team. Uh, Frucho, smallest kid on the court with the rebound. Shot was put up by Dupree. Nice steal by James. Looks down low. Count the basket by Sanford. Frucho lost his footing there for a second. Now he seems to be limping a little bit also, Mark. Yeah, I wonder if he, he twisted, twisted it a little. his ankle a little bit. Birmingham turns, fires, got it. Birmingham with a hot hand. James, James right to the hole. Good drive gracious. by James. I think we may see a little bit more of that as this game goes on. Well, James, a big kid, 6'3", but, you know, a, a heavy 6'3". Nelligan, little hook shot, won't go off the glass. There's James. 
count, count the, hoop. the hoop and he's fouled. Eubanks first, Cannoneers fourth. So next foul, no matter what, everybody shoots. That time, James did an excellent job of breaking as soon as the ball went up by Nelligan. And that's usually probably what this team usually does, seeing that they do have the height, of, height fa factor. I would imagine they probably release one player every time, figuring they're going to get the rebound and just dish and it just down dish the it same down way they court. did then. Exactly. Billy Williams back into the game for the Cannoneers as Brian Carroll sits. Uban tried to dish it down to Nelligan. Not to be. Here's a two on one break, and Fruchot is going to be called for the foul. This is the type of running game that we expected from the Chargers right from the onset. They've cut this lead down to nine. It's Fruchot's second personal foul. Sanford at the line. He'll shoot two. Misses the first. Perfect on the second. Nothing but cotton. Eight point lead. Uban for three won't go. Going to have a foul on Uban, I believe. That'll be his second. Glover at the line. He'll shoot one on one. Makes the first, he'll get the bonus. Chance to cut this Cannoneer lead to six. Makes the second. 6.25 to go. In the half, Cannoneer lead cut to six. Crucial pulls up off the glass. Nice pull up jumper by Fruchot that time. Did a nice job to bank it off the glass. That's going to be three on you, Ben. No, no fouls 44, on 44 and Elegant. Elegant. First. Foul shots are going to play a very important part in the rest of this first half. Uh, both teams in As a bonus. Right man. now, the Chargers have cut this lead down to eight points. Eight points. And both foul shots missed. Turner Carroll has stepped up that defensive defense just, effort. Just yes. one little notch, just Mark. Just a little bit. Strong, strong defense right now. Frucho, Nelligan. Dribble around traffic and oh, count the basket. Nice job that time by Nelligan. Ortiz, no. Sanford. Like you said, Doug, they're using the glass. Yeah, they are. And starting, they're going in. 
Right now, they are starting to use the glass. They're getting a good job, and one thing they're doing now is getting a little better job done on the boards, plus the fact that James is penetrating a little more, and then he, start, then he can dish off. Then he dishes very well. He dishes inside. He'll draw the double team. You'll see it right here. Foul is going to be on Williams. Wow. That a costly foul as that is Billy's third. And Sanford will go to the line for the one and one. Must have called a push from behind. Sanford did get down on the rebound, but it did look like he went down on his own accord from up here. Sanford makes the first. Brian Carroll's gonna check back in. He'll replace Williams who has to sit with his third personal. Down to a six point ball game. Cannoneers on top 30 to 24 with 4.45 left in the half. They dish it down to Carroll. He pulls it out. Nelligan in heavy traffic. Or Birmingham, rather, in traffic. There's going to be a foul on Glover. Boy, took him a while to blow the whistle. Yeah, it did. Glover all over Uban that time. And Jordan will go to the line for the one and one. Glover's second foul. 4.24 to go in the half. Cannoneers up by six. Uban misses, rebound James. Sanford shot won't go. Rebound. Little strong off the backboard that time by Sanford. Uban up and off the glass. Boy, is he pumped. This is James. Good move by James, and we've got a whistle. And Birmingham suckered him right into that. He came down to court and said, come on, come on. And James took it right to him, and Birmingham stood his ground and got the call. That's number three on Mr. James. And he has to sit. Turner Car Carroll can ill afford to lose him wow. right now. There goes anything they've had in the, in the, any sort of penetration by the guards has been from him. Good job defensively that time by the Cannoneers. Well, we've seen uh, Birmingham do that. Take that charge. Game, in and game, game out, after Mark. game after game. Uban's shot doesn't get the roll. Nelligan with the rebound. Double pumps. Try to draw the foul. Give him the basket. Nice inside effort by Nelligan. Cannoneers have gotten quite a few putback points, Mark, in this first half. There's Hill's a good roll. Nice drive by Shondell Dupree. They gave him that baseline and he took it for two. Cannoneer lead is eight with three minutes left in the half. Fruscio down to Carroll. And a three second Not violation. I don't know if he called three or if Carroll dribbled the ball on the out of bounds line. I think he held up the three, the three did he? second. Okay. Yeah. Pretty sure he did. Carroll not quite ready for that pass by Fruscio after no. he penetrated. No. Three-point shot won't go. Rebound Birmingham. They kick it up ahead to Uban. Three-on-three three break. Nelligan gets the basket. Nelligan with a super effort. Including a little push on the hip. <laughs> 
Real nice job by Nelligan tonight. Nelligan playing some super offense and not too shabby on the defensive end of the court. Uh, not at all. The last four or five ball games, Mark, he's done a tremendous job on defense. Sanford shot won't go, and there's that Nelligan kid again with a rebound. You know, after you do the great job on the defense, your offensive game just seems to pick seems up. Seems to come with it, and there's a foul. Birmingham's going to go to the line. Foul number 25, Alfredo Ortiz, his second. We've watched these Cannoneers all year, Mark, and in my opinion, Nelligan is probably one of the most improved players from the beginning of this year until right now. He's done a super, super job. He's uh, progressed every ball game. Every ball game, Matt's gotten better, and it's it's been interesting to watch this Cannoneer club as you went a step higher in sectional play, how one kid kind of stepped forward and, and imp improved his game oh, a little he bit to help did. the team, and he Matt's did. been one of them. Back Birmingham. To a, back to an 11-point lead now, Mark. We watched through the year, Doug, and as people watched our games through the year, we said that Scott Fruscio from the beginning of the year to the end of the regular season had improved his game tremendously. And now you've got Birmingham and Nelligan who have picked up their game since the sectional play started. And Williams came on real strong in the sectionals. Yeah, the team seemed to gel at exactly the right point uh, definitely. in time. And uh, things have really worked worked real well for them all year. Putback basket by Ortiz won't go. And yeah, them are the kind of baskets that this Turner Carroll team has got to have. Bad pass by Brian Carroll. Carroll with the foul. Count the basket. Another good look inside. Found, found Sanders found down low. Wide open. Yep. And that's happened quite a bit tonight. It's just the fact that we said earlier they can't seem to convert them little chip shots. No, they weren't converting on them at all early. Sanford cuts the Cannoneer lead to 10. Three-point attempt now. Try to cut it to 9 with 1.39 to go in a half. Misses. Brian Carroll the rebound. Gives it to Uban. Stops at the top of the key. Won't go. Gets it back. Turns. Fires. Blocked. Uban looking for the foul. Here's the fast break. Two on one. Nice behind the back pass. Count the hoop. Good Count fast the break move. That's what we expected right along, Mark, by this ball club. We just got a good look at it. They got a real good time. look at the fast break that time. Uban still wanting a foul call down the other end. Yard. It's two plays later. Get back to this one. Birmingham with the ball. Gives it to Fruscio. To you, Ben. Cannoneers right now in that 4-0 offensive set mark where they try to hold for the last shot. If they get the easy layup, they'll go for they'll it. They'll take it, but. Now well, the Cannoneers won't be able to do, to do this next year. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see, and there's a foul. There's a foul on number 23, Gerald Brown. That's Brown's third. And the Chargers right now are going to start feeling the effects of this foul. Yeah, they are. As Brown has to come out. Balled. Hudson checks back in. As we were saying, it's that new rule pass. The new rule New York. with the 45-second clock. It'll uh, be interesting. Mardigan won't be able to do it until at least 45 seconds left in that. <laughs> he likes to start it at about a minute and eight or whatever. Now, who was the foul called on here? All right. Uban's going to go to the line. Uban has struggled from the line as of late. And then again, he, he misses another one. Nelligan wants to follow. Nelligan upset underneath. there. He was hammered underneath, but no call. Canada lead still at eight. 34 seconds and counting to go into half. The Chargers now a hole for the last shot. Canada is content to stay back. He's telling White to play. They got a five-second violation. They're behind. They have to. They got to. They have to advance that ball, Mark. 
Birmingham loses it out of bounds with five seconds on the clock. Yeah, the team behind Mark has to initiate the, yeah, the action in the ball game. They can't just kind of stand out there. Uh, steal by Uban. But we tried to get it down and Elegant. Lost the handle halfway up through the pass. That's the end of the half with the Cannoneers on top. 38 to 30. This is Spectator Sports. We'll be back in a minute. We're back for the second half of tonight's contest. Cannoneers on top, 30 to 38. And a half, a half of basketball that we didn't expect to see, a quarter of a best of this game we expected to see. Yeah, the first quarter, Mark, we, uh, we expected to see Turner Carroll come out and run. They did not. They found themselves behind by uh, 10, 12, 14 points early on in the ball game. But since then, have come back. They've started to get their running game back into effect. They effect. They've still missed a few easy shots, but right now they've got the momentum going on their side. I think. It looks that way. Well, let's see what happens here in the opening seconds of this one. Half. Birmingham would have put back. That's one thing the Cannoneers have done basically in this ball game. Have done a real good job on the offensive glass and have got quite a few putback points where quite Turner Carroll has uh, it. Exactly. He dribbled on the line. Credit Williams with the good defense that time. And now they've put a shadow on Frucho and leaving Uban alone. Uban dribbled it off Hudson's foot. Or Brown's foot, rather. They're tempting Birmingham to shoot, and he does, and he misses. Ball slapped out of bounds by Ortiz. It's still Cannoneer ball. You see the Cannoneers doing a good job of boxing out on the boards, not allowing uh, Turner Carroll to get good inside position. Therefore, Block. they have to bat the ball around. An elegant shot blocked. There's a tip and out of bounds. Ball tipped out of bounds by Glover. Uban won't get his shot to drop. Ortiz the rebound. Nearly stolen by Frucho. You can see that's what Turner Carroll started to do at the end of the first half. First yeah. half. They started releasing one man as the shot went up, hoping to get that defensive board and then a long outlet pass, and it's worked a couple of times. Well, Uban slapped that pass down and then gave up the body big time to try to save the ball. Nearly crashed his head into the stanchions there for the basket, but he's all right. Three-point shot. Count it. Ortiz with a three-pointer. Cuts the Cannoneer lead to seven. Birmingham looks to Nelligan. And heavy traffic. Count it. Good shot by Nelligan. Sort of a floater knuckleball type shot yeah. that time. Not much spin on the ball, but very effective. That steps. Sanford that time kind of got his feet going before he put the ball down. It seems like a pretty partisan crowd here for the Cannoneers, Mark. It's almost like they're home away from yeah, home right really. now. Yeah, uh, really. Glens Falls has become a big-time place for them to play. Uh, the guards up here get to know the kids. Uh, it's fun. Williams down to Nelligan with the reverse. Count it. Good shot by Nelligan that time and on a, a nice look, pass. Good, real good look by Williams. James. Good ball control. Two Cannoneer defenders on one on each hip, and he still maintained possession of the ball. James fires, won't go. Rebound, Uban. To Williams. And no, no foul. foul. The crowd doesn't like that. Here's James all the way. Left hand, no good. Won't go. Sanford's putback is no good. And a three-on-one break by the Cannoneers. And there's a foul. That'd be 
Leon Glover. His third. Well, it was a healthy exchange down here. <laughs> I don't know how else to call it, Doug. Yeah, it really was. Nelligan wide Nelligan open. Wide open for two. Frucho playing defense tight again. Glover wants the ball on top. Ortiz. Frucho found himself deep in the hole that time. Not the place to be when you're 5'7. No, really not when you've got 6'5, six 6'6 foot six foot six right around, around you. Deflection out of bounds, it'll be Cannoneer ball. Doug, well, we got this little bit of a break here. We'd like to say hi to a very good friend of Spectator Sports, Pete Passaretti. Pete, under the weather, uh, couldn't make the trip up here. Foul is going to be on Williams. Yeah, Mark, I just talked to Pete this afternoon. He wanted to come up to this ball game today, but his grandson is playing tomorrow. Right. For St. Bridget's, another water elite team in the diocesan championship for the Biddies, and he wants to be there at his, yes. his ball game. Yes. We can't blame Pete for no, that. No. Pete's got the strength to make one. That's the one he's got to be to. That's all there is to it. But uh, Pete's with these guys in spirit here this afternoon. Nelligan right. comes up with another big rebound. Hey, he told me to t wish everybody the best of luck. He'd really like to be here. I'm sure, he uh, feels bad that he can't. But like you said, he's here in spirit. And he'll do everything. We're going to try and get this game up to him to see, and I'm sure he'll enjoy that. And there's an alley-oop dunk by Sanford. That Bill bring, Williams into the game. That brings the Turner Carroll uh, fans alive, Mark. Ooh, A nice super ever. play that time. I woke time. up everybody in the house that sure time. He did. Well executed play. Eubanks floater counts. James' the shot won't go. Rebound Nelligan. They get it to Uban. Takes it all the way in. Won't go. Nelligan with a rebound. Count it. Ball, count the basket. Well, it couldn't come at a better time for this senior, Mark. He's having a super, super ball game. Number 44, Matt Nelligan. Putting on quite a show here for the Waterville fans. He certainly is. And they appreciate it. Nelligan will go to the line. He'll try to convert to three-point play. Gets the roll. Shot by Dupree is good. Yeah, Dupree had nobody on him that time. Squared up to the hoop and let it fly. Hit nothing but net. Good shot. I don't know how Uban kept control of that. That referee blew that ball dead before anybody touched it out of bounds and the ball didn't hit the floor. Well, that's called how do you anticipation. Do? <laughs> okay. All right. I'll buy that. Strip by Uban. Chargers maintain possession. James with the ball. Puts up the jumper. Won't go. Rebound Carroll. He's got Nelligan all alone. Should be an easy deuce. And is. Well, the Cannoneers exploiting something Turner Carroll did. Released the man and got the easy deuce. And Coach Dupree wants, or Anseri rather, wants timeout. 
2.33 to go, third quarter. And the Chargers call their third timeout. Cannoneers up 53-39. We'll be right back. Well, Mark, Cannoneers on top by 14. They've got that 14-point lead back. They've held that twice, and Turner Carroll seems to keep coming back and knocking the lead down to about seven, but the Cannoneers well, that, stay right with it. That, that timeout by, by Turner Carroll that time was to stop the floodgates, I think. Uh, he could see that what was happening and uh, had to call timeout to slow things down a little bit, try to regroup his kids again. But he called his third timeout, so we'll see. Birmingham on the block that time. Gonna have a foul on Brian Carroll. See fouls number 21 Dupree after the shot. Dupree will go to the line. He'll shoot two. 216 left in the third quarter. Misses the first. Nothing but cotton on the second. Got a 13 point lead for the Cannoneers. Uban brings it up to court. Birmingham got it back, loses and he's fouled. Foul on number 21, I believe. Yes, 21. Dupree, his first. Birmingham talking to the referee. Mark wanted so a shooting, shooting foul that time. Ref says no way. No way. Birmingham wants to go to the line every chance he can. <laughs> uh, an excellent foul shooter. Scores a lot of points from the charity strike. Here's the same play again, Mark. No, he walked. Travel. Same play again. Rebounded by James. Won't go. Cannoneers well. come out of the pack with it. Jordan Uban. Birmingham goes to the hole. He's fouled. Blocking foul is going to be called. So Birmingham's going to go to the line. He's going to get a shooting foul this time. Fouls on 22, Terrence Hudson. His first personal. Birmingham will go to the line. He'll shoot a pair. But again, more importantly, the fourth personal foul. Team-wise for the Turner Carroll team. So the next fouls at all, the Cannoneers will go to the line. Nothing but cotton on the first. Cannoners back to that 14 point lead. They'll try to make it 15 and I believe that'll be their biggest lead of the night. And it is the 15 and it point is lead. 15 point lead and the biggest of the night for the Cannoneers. And a blocking foul. Yes. And the crowd doesn't like that. No, right. but I want to tell you, Doug, he kind of leaned with him just a, just little, a little to stay bit. in front of him. Wasn't quite there no, in time, and he no. tried to get the body there. Tried to get over in front of him. He did kind of drop his one shoulder to stay 
in that lane with him. You know, it's very effective, Mark, when you do get driven backwards straight back. Right, it, it really like does look like yeah, charge. Yeah, but, but I did see that just a little bit of a dip in his body that time. Not a shooting foul. And the crowd doesn't like that call either. No way. Boy, some guys from right down in front are not happy with that one. Three-point shot by Ortiz off the mark. Rebound handled by the Chargers. Brian Carroll will draw the foul. She fouled Dupree in the active shooting. And Dupree will go to the line for two to try to cut into this 15-point lead. There's 108 left in the third quarter. That the second foul by Brian Carroll. Third team, fourth team foul, rather, for the Cannoneers. Well, both teams now will be over the limit on the next foul. Well, that miss woke up the Cannoneer crowd. Yeah, the Chargers right now having a little bit of difficulty from the charity stripe also. Ortiz won't go. Rebound Glover won't go. Rebound Birmingham, he holds on. Carroll comes out of there with the ball. Finds Nelligan underneath, we got a foul. Believe the foul's on 25 Ortiz. Yes. That's gonna put Brian Carroll to the line for the one and one. It'll Ortiz. be his first opportunity from the charity stripe tonight. Ortiz. 44 seconds left. Ortiz picks up his third personal foul. 44 seconds, as you said, left in the third quarter. Carroll makes the first. He gets the bonus. I kind of guess those days off, Mardigan calls a day off practice. You go and watch a film and then you shoot 100 foul shots. Some day off, huh? Yeah. Heck of a day off. But. <laughs> it pays it off. It pays off. Glover with the ball. Over to James. They'll hold for one, I'm, I would imagine, 30 seconds. There's the opening. You got an opening like that, Mark, you've got to you've take it. You've got to take it. Birmingham stood his ground, no call. Dupree saw the opening, took it right to the hole, scored the easy bucket. Cannoneers now with the last shot. Nelligan won't go. Birmingham gets the rebound, he's fouled. Birmingham will go to the line with four seconds left in the quarter. There's your score, 57-42 with the four seconds in this third period. Cannoneers on top by that 15-point lead. I've got that as Sanford's third. Birmingham with the line will shoot a pair. Makes the first. And a second. Ortiz fires one up. Right over the top of the basket. There's still a second left. Cannoneers will get the ball back right up here. Now they're going to get it out down below. Oh, no, no. Ball was last touched down here. The ball was passed in bounds, though. Oh, all right. You're right. James fires one up. And over. And over. It's the end of the third quarter, and the Cannoneers on top. 
59 to 42. This is Spectator Sports. We'll be back with the fourth and final quarter of this contest in one minute. Just had a good look at some of the Water of Lee faithful right there. And boy, they are faithful. Eight minutes of basketball to go, Mark. Cannoneers holding on to a 17-point 17 17 point lead. With eight minutes to go. And this could be the culmination of a season that uh, Water of Lee people have been waiting for for a long time. Crowd once again unhappy, but I think he did take that little hop step like after he, he got the ball. James, that's a double dribble. Down Ortiz, blocked from behind, it looked like. Carroll with the foul. That'll be three on Brian. Sends Ortiz to the line. Williams is going to check back into the ball game. As now Brian's going to sit. Williams comes back in with three fouls. Ortiz makes the first. And a second. Cuts the Cannoneer lead to 15. And a call Fushaw for being out of bounds. Good D by out of bounds. James. Yeah, real good D that time by James. Got right to the spot and cut him right off. James dishes down low. Count it. Sanford down low. Here's a three on one break. Nelligan won't go, gets his own rebound. Up off the glass, count it. How many times has he done that this afternoon, Mark? Too many to keep track of on two hands. Ortiz with three, won't go. Glover gets the rebound. Won't go, Nelligan another rebound. They find Uban. He had Williams out in front, it's got Frucho. For two. We got a blocking foul. Foul's going to be on you, Ben. That'll be number four. No, three. I've only got him for three. Now, okay. let's see. Third, Third, you're right. Tonight I'm doing a decent job up here, I think. <laughs> James will go to the line. He'll shoot two as Uban picks up the blocking foul. Gets the bounce and makes the first. And a second.
Ooh, Williams waited for the pass and got fouled. It looked like he tried to dish it back off to Nelligan. And as he tried to pass, he did get fouled that time. He'll go to the line for the one and one. Alfredo Ortiz just picked up his fourth personal. Williams will go to the line. He'll shoot one and one. In and out, Nelligan tried to steal that rebound and threw it out of bounds. Six twenty-five left in the ball game. Cannoneers with a fifteen-point lead, and right now the Chargers are going to have to look to James to lead this team. He's going to have yeah. to take the ball to the hole and dish off or whatever he has to do, and that's just what he's doing now. Dished right off to Ortiz for two. Nice job. Oh, well, you called that one perfectly, Doug. Yeah, he's got to take control. Steal. Frucho with the foul. I think Coach Mardigan's going to call timeout. Doesn't like yeah, what he sees like right now. Doesn't like what he sees here. Scott Frucho called timeout or committed the personal foul, and Coach Mardigan, like like Doug said, called timeout to talk it over. 6:01 to go, fourth quarter. Canadiers up by 13, 63 to 50. We'll be back in one minute. Six oh one to go in this contest. Canoners up by thirteen. Still a lot of time though for the Chargers, Mark, to get back into this ball game. They've, like we said earlier, they've got to get the ball in James's hands, let him do his thing, bring the ball to the hole, dish off. They have to rebound a little more effectively and not give the Cannoneers the second and third efforts. Cannoneers been doing an excellent job on the glass, even though uh, definitely uh, again, the shorter team on the floor. But Turner Carroll has to keep their minds on uh, rebounding and watching James to get the ball. Glover missed the first. Second half, their free throw percentage has been way down also. Way down. This is the second Nelligan to rebound. They find Uban. They'll try to trap as he brings it over. They do. Ball goes out of bounds off of Ortiz's hand. That a tr risky trap for Ortiz is with four personal fouls. Yeah, really, but they've got to go all out. There's gotta no way they yeah. have to play gotta all out something. right now, being down this many points. Uban can't get it to go. Nelligan with the rebound blocked. It was blocked by Ortiz. Nelligan was just a little bit too far underneath the basket to get a good shot off, but a re defensive rebound right there by Nelligan. And cannon air ball. And an air ball. Good call by the official. Well, as far as half the people in this place are concerned, <laughs> it was a good call. Referee said Sanford knocked the ball out of Nelligan's hand. James tried for the steal that time. Williams puts up the jumper, won't go. Nelligan gets the rebound, won't go. Birmingham with the rebound, strong shot. Count the basket and he's fouled. Foul on number 44, Kevin Sanford, his third. Once again, a good second and third effort by the Cannoneers on the offensive boards. That's where they've won this ball game, or that's why they're leading in this ball game right now. They haven't won it yet. 
but they're well on their way. Well on their way, and it has been their boards all night. Birmingham converts the three-point play. Five minutes, 10 seconds to go. James for three, won't go. Fruscio comes out of there with a rebound. Dribbles it up court, he's fouled. They're gonna say he stepped no, out of bounds. No, they say he stepped out of bounds. Well, that pleased half the people in the place. <laughs> It's one thing the Chargers are doing when they do try to trap or force somebody to the outside, they take away the whole outside. They get right to the line. Yeah, they get to that spot in a hurry. And they don't they, give you much room to get no, around them. Not at all. James's shot won't go. Ortiz with the rebound. Count the basket, and he's followed by Nelligan. Nelligan second. Chargers have cut the lead back to 14 points with a chance to go to 13 with 4.51 to go. The kind of ball game that Nelligan's played tonight and only a second personal foul, it's amazing. Truly amazing. Ortiz converts the three-point play, cuts the lead to 13. Full court pressure, Mark. Deal. Eubank keeps it alive and throws it out of bounds off Ortiz. Good hustle that time by Uban. Tried to get it to Birmingham, lost it. Uban will be whistled for the foul, count the hoop. Juban's fourth. And this lead has been cut to 10, 11, with a chance to cut with it to 10. With a chance to cut it to 10, with James going to the line. And still plenty of time, 4.35 left in the ball game. And Coach Mardigan calls three players over, calms them down. James does cut it to 10. Right now the Cannoneers. 4.35 to go. Cannoneers having a very difficult time with the Charger press. They've thrown the ball away twice out of the last three times down, and there's a near takeaway there. Williams comes up with a loose one. They get it to Birmingham, down to Nelligan. He's fouled by Ortiz, and that should be it for him. If that fouls on Ortiz. No, well, no, they've okay. got him for four officially. Well, let's see, I ain't doing a good job of it. <laughs> huh. Nelligan will go to the line. He'll shoot a pair. It's now a 10-point ball game. Nelligan's first shot way short. Way short of the mark. Second one's perfect. Cannon early back to 11. Look down low, in and out. Williams with a rebound and get it to Uban. Cannoneers with the numbers right here. Fruscio with the lay-in. Good transition basketball by the Cannoneers. They needed that one. That should have been a carry by Glover. Once again, the Cannoneers with the numbers. Uban with the floater, won't go. Nelligan gets it back, blocked. Well, they're going to say Williams knocked it out of James's hand. Crowd not happy with the call. Not at all. Cannoneers back on top by 13 with 335 left. And Williams will pick up this foul. It's his fourth unofficially. Glover will go to the line. No, they got him for five. They're That's saying it. five now, yeah. Mark. So Williams is out of the ball game. He gets a nice hand standing ovation from the Waterbury crowd. A well-deserved hand. Well-deserved hand. This being Williams' last, last ball game. game. He's it's a senior, last, and this yes. is it. He goes down a bench. Gets fives from everybody.
Glover at the line, he'll shoot two. Misses the first. Not having the official stats in front of us, Mark, but the Chargers have missed an awful lot of foul yeah. shots in the second not, half. Not a very good free throw shooting team here tonight. Gets the second. Cannon early cut to 12. Three and a half minutes to go. Some good full court pressure right here by the Chargers. They'll try to trap. Cannoners do break it. Cannoners now looking to take some time off the clock. Well, they're going to want to shorten the ball game, and that'll be James, the foul on James, as Birmingham will go to the line for the one and one. It's number four on James. Birmingham will go to the line. He'll shoot the one and one. Nothing but Cotton on the first, he'll get the bonus. Makes the second. Three minutes, 14 seconds to go. Steal by Nelligan. He'll wisely hold it up. Birmingham had a wide open and jumper, didn't take it. Didn't take the shot. No, they want to get some time off of this clock. Their Cannoneer fans starting their clap. Ooh, near walk by Birmingham. We got a foul. On Sanders, that should be number four. Now Uban will go to the line for the one and one. As the Chargers call timeout with 2.43 left in the ball game, Cannoneers on top by 14 points. They lead 71-57. We'll be right back. We're back, 2.43 to go in this contest. Canada's up 71-57. Well, Mark, there still is time for the Chargers, but time is running out. The clock is definitely, it's not thoroughly against them yet, but it's, it's getting there. Uban sinks these two free throws. He got the first. He sinks this one. It'll be a 16-point lead with 2.43 to go. Not insurmountable, but very difficult very to difficult. overcome. Well, they've got to speed it up a little bit. Here's James. For three. Won't go. Nelligan comes up with the rebound. They wisely get the ball to Uban. We're under two minutes and a half, two and a half minutes to go. Well, we're also getting down to the point where the Chargers can't afford to foul because they may foul out. But they of the may ball fall game. out. That's it. They may foul out one of their players, one of their better players. Nelligan somehow gets it back, throws it up hard off the glass. We're going to have a traveling violation 
as Nelligan and Carroll didn't realize who was going for the rebound. They had their backs to each other and their arms tangled up. Two minutes flat to go in the ball game. They kick it down low to Sanders. Won't get it to drop. James tried to tip it up. Nothing there. They get it ahead to Frusho. Won't get it to drop. They're going to have a foul on Uban. Uban with five. He's out He's of the out ball of the game. Ball game. One forty-two to go. And that's Jordan's. This is Jordan's last ball game. This he gets be a big round of applause. Big a standing round of ovation. Applause. A well-deserved round. Uban being hugged by Mardigan. Uban replaced in the ball game by number 50, Dave Cady. Glover at the line. He'll shoot one on one. Birmingham the rebound. And that He's may fouled be by Ortiz, and that may be it for Ortiz. Let's see. That's it for Ortiz. Well, you're going to see them keep the hand, keep the ball right now in the hands of Birmingham and Frusho. More than likely, Birmingham more than anybody. Yeah, as best, he is the the best free throw shooter on the team. Yeah, you're going to see him go to the line quite a few times here in this last minute and yep. 36 seconds. Ortiz replaced in the ball game by 22, Terrence Hudson. All the players on the Cannoneer bench now on their feet. They know this one is well in hand, Mark. Uh, yeah, 136, 16 point lead. Two more points right here and it's all over. Birmingham gets the first. Well, if the Cannoneers yeah. do hang on to win this, Mark, I didn't want to say it too early in the ball game. Me neither. Be the first time that a section two, two basketball team has won the Federation Championship. And I'll tell you, it couldn't come at a better season for the Cannoneers. I'll tell you, these kids have been having a a dream year so far this year. Water of Elite calls timeout. Coach Mardigan definitely wants to settle these kids down, get things squared away as to what they're going to do in this last minute and 36 seconds with an 18-point lead. He does not want them to do anything stupid and throw this one away. Now, there isn't too many things these, these kids uh, can't do, and I don't think they're going to let this one slip away. They can feel it. It's right in their grasp right now. They're just putting a chokehold on it. Yeah, I think. I think. I think Mardigan just wants to make sure everybody knows what they're supposed to do, where they're supposed to go on the floor, and to be gracious when you accept your award. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Should the Cannoneers hold on and win this one, Doug? The boys' varsity sports have not lost a game since the beginning of the year. Forget basketball. They haven't lost a game since the beginning of the year. Oh, that's right. The, the football team on their way to the state championship. Uh, undefeated. Undefeated. Cannoneers uh, look like they're going to finish this one at 28-0. And uh, another I don't think it puts a lot of pressure on Tony Curl for the baseball team. Do you? Well, I wouldn't <laughs> want to be in Tony's shoes. Believe no me. Way. Let me put it that way. No way. But he's going to have a fine baseball team this Definitely. year. Once he gets all Once these kids back. He gets things going. Back out on the field. He's, yeah. He's been trying to have practice at 6 o'clock in the morning. Oh, I know it. And he I just hasn't it. had the court time. A lot of his players, very many of the players here like Uban and uh, Williams. Yep. There's quite a few of them out here that are playing. Yeah, you got Uban and Williams right at now, start, so. but you got kids on the bench. Uh, Dominic, Dominic Frusho, Jason Davis, Jason Doug Davis. Schoonmaker. They all play baseball in it. And here they are still involved in hoop. And uh, of course, Mardigan ran into the same thing with the football. With the football. The the football you know, so. Well, things will all they all seem even to turn out. Themselves they, yeah, around. they do. Sanders missed the second free throw. And Nelligan with the rebound, and he's fouled right away. Well, another thing that we haven't done all year either, Mark, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it right now that we're going we're to give a spectator sports player the game award, and I, I think it should go to Matt Nelligan. Ah, you he's got played it. one super, super ball game today. Super ball game and is And it couldn't have right. come at a better time. 
His he's last been, ball game as a senior at Water of Leighton, he's yeah, got to be I on gotta, cloud nine. I got to agree with you. I have to agree with you 100%. As Matt just put an exclamation point to your statement by making his yeah, free throw. Right. That a boy, Matt. <laughs> Don't let us down now, Matt. Katie, Katie on the, the floor. Steal. James for three. Won't go. Nelligan, another rebound. They get I'm, the ball ahead to Katie. They get it ahead to Carroll. He's going to have an easy deuce here. And he's now not he pulls take it out. They get it to Frucho, and he'll pull it out. And the crowd loves it. And there's a foul on Birmingham. One oh two still left in the ball game, and Birmingham will go to the line. We foul by number twenty three, Gerald Brown. Gerald Brown checks out of the game. Well, Doug, I see if you saw three kids out there all shaking hands together, Matt Nelligan, Scott Frucho, and Dave Cady. Now, these kids have been together since third grade. CYO basketball, CYO basketball. right up through. I, I talked to Matt after I, we met the bus after the Waterville Cannoneers won the state championship, and I went up to Nelligan up at the high school, and I said, Matt, I've been waiting for this since third grade. And one of the Kaiser uh, transfer from Shenandoah, first year down here at Waterville, Looked at me like I, did, I had six heads, you know. <laughs> and Matt knew what I meant, yep. <laughs> you know. No, it's a great credit, this Water Elite team. It's a great credit to both organizations, all CYO organizations in the city of Water Elite that have really developed these kids at an early age. An these kids are playing job. in third and fourth grade yeah. now, organized ball. Now we're under a minute, and this one's going in the books as a W. Frucho's foul. He'll go to the line now for the one and one. Cannoneers on top by 20 with 45 seconds left. And the crowd can really if taste it me, now. If you hear me giggle from time to time, don't worry about it. I'm not losing my mind. I just, I said to a friend of mine at the beginning of the year, Jim Conroy. I said, Jimmy, this is the year that they're going to do it. Well, your prediction was right. You didn't jinx them. They've gone no. all the way. No, I said it at the very beginning of the year. I said, if they're going to do it, it's going to be this year. Frucho cans them both. He's going to come out of the game, and he'll get a standing ovation. He'll get a standing ovation is right. There's a sight for you, you man and Frucho. And Williams, Williams also a member of that. CYO team at third grade. Brian Carroll checks out of the ball game. Schoonmaker, Schoonmaker in for him. Schoonmaker in, Bouchard in the game. We got a foul on Schoonmaker, Schoonmaker I, believe. I believe. He'll stop the clock with 38 seconds left. Foul on Schoonmaker. Egan's going to come in. We got a substitution into the game. He's coming in for Dave Cady. Now what Mardigan's trying to do is get the seniors out one at out a time. One at now. a time. Yeah. Dave James is senior this is his first. last ball game. Yep. There's only one senior left on the court to come out that hasn't, you know, hasn't been out, and that's Nelligan. And you're gonna see Bouchard come maybe come right back out as Jamie's also a senior. Nelligan comes out of this ball game, Mark. It's, this place is going to come down. He's going to yes. get a real big round of applause. He certainly is. And look at him. He's going way over to the other end. Yeah, he doesn't want to come out. <laughs> Maybe coach won't see me over here. Right. He knows he's coming out. Yeah, he knows. He's talking to Mrs. Carlson. He's talking to the cheerleaders. Birmingham makes the first. And, and here's here the he substitution, comes. and he's coming out. Watch the crowd reaction. Listen to this crowd. 
Both sides, Mark, he's done a super job. And as we said, the last eight to 10 ball games, he's been phenomenal. He really gelled when the team needed him. Wow, he came, he came to play today, I'll tell you. Birmingham. Todd Birmingham, Birmingham will Birmingham leave the ball game. The game. And another big round of applause. Bouchard with a steal, and he's fouled. Bouchard will go to the line for the one and one. Still 26 seconds left. And Bouchard is going to come out after he. Bouchard will come out, he being the last senior left on the floor. Right, he's got to yeah. get his due, yeah. due respect, I guess. But he's going to miss the foul shot and stay Literally. in. Stay in the game. We got a foul on Schoomaker as he and James got tied up during the rebound. Only three ticks of the clock. And Bouchard gets a round of applause. Now Bouchard did play one year on that CYO team that uh, the rest of those guys played on. On the court for the Cannoneers, Kaiser 51, Schoomaker 33, Egan 14, Dominic Fruscio 23, and Jason Davis 25. Twenty-two ticks of the clock left. Well, Mark, it, hopefully after this ball game, we'll try to get we'll get a word with Coach Mardigan and a few of the players, a few, few of the, the players. seniors on the team. We'll see yep. what we can do about it. Time, time permitting, permitting anyway. Exactly. Twenty seconds left. Schoolmaker with a steal. He gets it into Davis. This. Here we go. Here we go. Oh. No. Schoolmaker with the foul. Oh, won't go. He gets it back. Blocked. And an intentional foul intentional is going to be called, being on called on Kaiser, Kaiser I believe. With, with four fourth. seconds left. Foul is, is on Kaiser. Intentional. An intentional foul. James will get two, and then the Chargers will get the ball back. He makes the first. I really thought Jason Davis, maybe he wanted to. Maybe that's why he lost the handle. I, I yeah, thought he was going to go for the slam. Put mark. it home. Yep. Probably a little undecided, a little nervous out there. Yeah, really. Look at all these people I'm in front of. James missed the second, but they do get the ball back. Shot Davis blocked with by block. Davis. Egan dribbles it out. And that's it. it from the. Glens Falls Civic Center to Cannoneers, the first team in Section 2 to ever win a Federation Cup. 
We'll let the crowd tell you the story here for a minute. Uh, we've got an awards presentation to give. Awards are being given out to the second place team. Turner Carroll. There's the rabbit, Doug. Yeah, there's the symbol the of the Cannoneers still going. Not anymore, that's it. That's it. But that proved to be an inspiration to him. Yeah, it really did after the last ball game, yep. the game before this, yep. it was put out there on the floor. I guess put they had there. it going for a week in school. Yeah. And it, it really got the kids wound up. Got them a little pumped up. Cannoneers. No, no, they got to hang on to that rabbit for the for the baseball team. That's yeah. all. That's all. To keep things still going. Well, the baseball season only a couple of weeks away. Yeah. And the kids on the team that played on this basketball team are not going to have much time to get ready, but I'm sure when the time comes, they'll be there. Oh, most definitely. So all the coaches. You know, while we have a chance to, Mark, I think it's proper that we thank Glens Falls, the Glens Falls Civic Center, Section 2 Basketball, the Federation, uh, New York State Basketball for allowing us to do, do these games. Well, and, we, I'll name some people in, in uh, by name. Bill Higgins, the state uh, chairman, has been awfully gracious to Spectator Sports, as has been Doug Kenyon, the executive director of the tournament, and Mike Lilac, the chairman of Section 2 basketball uh, they've been awful kind to us and uh, we hope we do them justice and I know the Cannoneers did section 2 justice today yeah they really did and this is this has been an excellently run tournament right through right from the beginning of the sections right oh, through definitely. section 2 the yep. regionals everything has been you know like clockwork smooth and not just because the Cannoneers won but you know you can see it at the different places that we've been to as you're going to get a good look at the Cannoneers right there, yep. that everything is, has just been super as far as this whole tournament's been. But done a great job. We're going to give you these kids one at a time. Jamie Bouchard. Jamie, a senior's played his last ball game. Uh, da Scott Frusho. Scott Egan. They called John Leonard's name. John out with... Uh, Apparent tonsillitis. Billy Ashline, kid injured, uh, sidelined for most of the sectional play. Hey. Billy Williams, a senior. Listen to the crowd. Dominic Frusho. Jason Davis. Brian Carroll. Jordan Eubank. Right here, this crowd. Doug Birmingham will be back also. He'll be Mark. back. He's only a junior. Matt Nelligan. Dave Cady. Ron Kaiser. And George Mardigan.
I can hear that rabbit up here. Yeah, it's still tick, going. Tap, 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 tap. That rabbit's still going. Mardigan gets the Federation. Assistant coach Glenn Westfall. The all-star team is now going to be announced. Like I said, we're going to try to get a word with Coach Mardigan. We're going to announce the all-star team, the all-turning team, and then the MVP of the tournament. Player from Archbishop Walsh, who I presume have already left to go home. Sanford, number 44 from Turner Carroll, elected to the oil tournament team. Jordan Uban. Jordan Uban all turning team. Damone James all turning team. Matt Nelligan all turning team. Now I got it. Now I don't know, Doug. Yeah, I'm confused now also, Mark. I thought possibly the MVP. Todd Birmingham was just named the tournament most valuable player. I want to tell you, Doug, we said it earlier too. That kid will be back. He's coming back, and I'm sure Coach Mardigan wow. and everybody else at Waterville is thrilled about that aspect. Todd Birmingham, MVP of the Federation Tournament. In the C division. Not a shock, but a bit of a surprise. Yeah, really, it probably took them an awful long time to go That's, through. That's he was telling who was, uh, you know, down there because I imagine yeah, it was very, very yeah, close. Yeah, very close. But that's it right now for the action from Glens Falls. This is Spectator Sports. Like I said, we're going to try and get a word with Coach Mardigan. We'll be back in a minute, hopefully. Welcome back to the Glens Falls Civic Center. Hang on one second. Welcome back to the Glens Falls Civic Center. I'm Mark Cady. With me, Doug Schoonmaker from Spectator Sports. And with us is Coach George Mardigan. Coach, first of all, congratulations on one heck of a season. Thank you. Not only a good game tonight, but... Uh, uh, like I just said to you before we came on camera, a fair way to cap off the yeah, season. Nice yeah. ending. There's not much more you can ask of these guys. Early on in the ball game, I noticed that, uh, well, we figured that Turner Carroll would run and run and run, and they didn't. You guys kept getting a second and third shots. Rebounding was phenomenal. Did you expect it to be that way? Put on a, a, before the game, I put on a, the number 28 as one of the keys to the game, and I said to the team, I wanted to out-rebound this team by 28 rebounds. That would represent one rebound for each game we win this season. We out-rebounded them by 31. I think that was a, a heck of an well, advantage. Well, that means you got to play three more games. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try to get Shenanda Ho in. Yeah, well, <laughs> don't start that one up again. Uh, we'll, no, no. Let we'll let that one die, I think. Uh, Coach, I watched tonight in amazement at a show put on, a rebounding show put on by Matt Nelligan. Uh, 24 boards tonight. Unbelievable job. Uh, to go along with 20 or 25 boards and 24 points, uh, set a record for the C section uh, for the tournament. And uh, we watched a foul shooting display. 
by Todd Birmingham, went 19 for 19. It's going to have an asterisk that he's tied with John Mueller for 19 free throws. But John was 19 for 23, I believe, and Todd went 19 for 19. So we got to give the championship and that to Todd. Uh, you got two kids that are going to be forever in the books up here, uh, and one of them coming back in the Birmingham kid. Well, first of all, Todd, he's he's an excellent foul shooter, as that indicates, but he also can handle the ball well enough to break a press or, yes. or in a delay game to yep. draw the fouls. Uh, he's a confident ball handler, and usually he's matched up with a bigger kid who has a little trouble handling him in the open floor. As far as Matt goes, uh, I've waited till the end of the season now to give Matt his due, but I, I would have to say, in all honesty, in 14 seasons, he's the best rebounder I've ever coached. I think the the closest anyone comes as far as an average rebounder, average rebounds per game would be Jimmy Reisdorf in 82. Mm -hmm. You're talking, a, a, what is he, Doug, a 6'6", six, six, probably a 230. Six, 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 now he's seven, about 330. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy rebounded basically on power and yeah. size. Yep. Matt gets good, good position. He goes quick for the ball. When he gets it, he holds he it. He holds right on tight. We also mentioned during the show that during the game and stuff that we thought that Matt was probably the most improved player from the beginning on until the end. You know, it, it's something that we noticed all year. He improved every every game. I'd say yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. Or Matt or Scott Fruscio, one or the other. Uh, I, I think they both super improved a super amount. And Matt finished his high school career just with a fantastic game. I mean, taking not only the rebounding, but taking it at them offensively against a real big team. Yeah, we ran down the lineups, and they were like 6'6", six, 6'6", six, 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 and 6'5", six, across the front. And our tallest kid is Birmingham, 6'4". So uh, it's a super job by an outsized group of kids. The one, the one thing I told him in the locker room, you can tell how smart I am. See, I like to brag a little bit. I said, fellas, you know, I don't think we're going to grow by the time we get on the floor. So I don't think we're going to have any 6'8 guys. So we better decide to decide put a body now. on a guy yeah. and go after yep. the ball. And, uh... <laughs> uh, Coach, the first time ever that a Section 2 team has won this Federation Cup, uh, that alone uh, would be a phenomenal feat. Uh, but 28 no. Now, I know that's a school record. Uh, I, I don't know what else to say. These kids so far this year, you take that. The, the basketball team and take seven kids out of that team and they go back to the football team that went 11 and 0. Um, Doug and I were talking earlier. I don't think it puts any pressure at all on Tony Curro and the baseball end of this. <laughs> I'm not going to talk baseball. Um, I'm looking around. I see kids here in the back and stand up watching us. And uh, I saw Billy Williams out there. Uh, Todd Birmingham walked by a little while ago. Todd, one of the stars that you're going to get back next year. But you're losing not only a talented group of kids, but a real nice group of kids. And Billy Williams and uh, Jordan Eubanks, Scott Fruscio. Uh, there's what? How many guys you're losing? Uh, Matt Nelligan. Matt Nelligan. Line, Dave yep. Katie, Jamie Boucher. Yep. You're, you're losing probably a real and, and a nice bunch of kids. Oh, no doubt about it. And I talked to Artie Fruscio before we came downstairs. And I said it during the game. Some of those kids, you had Dave Cady, Jamie Bouchard, Matt Nelligan, Billy Williams, and Scott Fruscio have been playing together off and on basketball since they were in third grade, all the way back to the CYO program in Water League. Bill Williams Sr. brought a, a week ago after we clinched the state title. We had basically a day off. We just watched the film of the Livonia game, and he brought a tape of a St. Basil's Water League Catholic CYO game. And it was mainly the nucleus of the team yeah. against Jordan, who was on St. Basil's. <laughs> and uh, I'll tell you, huh? it, it was just hilarious yeah, to yes. see these guys yep. at the seventh or eighth grade level. And, yep. uh, it's, <laughs> it's something that these kids have been together for so long. And already said to me upstairs, it's a shame now we got to break them up. Yeah. You know, he it, said they should go to college together. <laughs> and I said they should. In the four years, we'll be going to the Final Four to watch them play. So. You know, there's something that. I had a kid I was scouting one night, Shalmont at Queensbury. The Polino kid who graduated from Shalmont mm -hmm. a year back, he sat with me for about a quarter and uh, he said, you know, coach, I want to tell you something about the Water Valley basketball guys. I said, what's that? He said, I, I see you got your guys at summer camp and I hear them tease each other and they fight with each other and they, you know, they'll, they'll get on each other's back and they're always, mm -hmm. but he said, boy, when somebody else tries it with them, they really stick up for one another. He said, we can't yeah. do that. Our guys get mad at one another, you know, so nah. you guys love it. 
I mean, that's one of the things I miss is, is the locker room and the practice, yeah. the fun yeah. I have with these guys. I mean, I, I've been known to stay on their back, but I crack up at some of the yeah. things they do. They're a close-knit group, I'll yeah, tell you. Yeah, they are. They had Doug Schoonmaker's going to be one of the enforcers a year from now. They had Billy Williams and Matt Nelligan put him in a floor hockey net. That was the highlight. Of, <laughs> that was the highlight of last week. I said, why are you guys doing that? He said, because he keeps punching us or teasing us that he runs. I said, Oh, well. All right, that's why. That's why. Now you know. Well, Coach, we got to get out of here. Uh, again, congratulations. And anybody in a couple of weeks, I know there's going to be a little deal going on in Warner Belief. You forgot about no, that. No, no, no. wanted us to mention it. There's going to be a little deal going on. I believe it's going to be at the Knights of Columbus in Warner Belief. And uh, somebody that's uh, near and dear to our hearts at Spectator Sports, Pete Passaretti, is going to. Uh, relieve you of something that's uh... <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you it won't be much relief <laughs> I, the like only I... stipulation I have on shaving my head I promised the kids a year ago if they won a state title which they did a week ago mm -hmm. I would do it mm -hmm. I don't feel I have a hell of a lot to lose anyway <laughs> the only thing is I want this guy out here Carmen D. Donato not to be part of this <laughs> I'll turn around and show the audience the trim he gave me for seven bucks I'm not in the seat 30 seconds there you go <laughs> Uh, Coach, it's been a wonderful year. Uh, we're gonna miss we're gonna miss Water Belief basketball until next year. Congratulations, the super season. Thanks a lot to you guys for taking your time. I know this is a time-consuming thing, spectator sports, and the kids really appreciate it. Yeah. They really do. That's why we do it. It's a I'll tell you, it's a big edge for Water Belief High Sports. I yeah. feel the ability to see yourselves game after game and see the games on TV mm -hmm. and the publicity. The kids love it. Well, we're glad to do it. And from Spectator Sports and for Coach Mardigan and Doug Schoonmaker, I'd like to say good night from Glens Falls. It's been a season to remember for the Cannoneers. A and long tonight, season. Oh, how yeah. does that season end? A memorable history, season for I'd the Waterville Leaf Cannoneers. It was the final high school basketball game of the year in Glens Falls tonight. Undefeated Waterville Leafs and Turner Carroll of Buffalo in the Class C Championship game of the Federation Tournament. Turner jumped out to a quick 4-2 lead. Watch the alley-oop from Damon James to Kevin Sanford. Nice Chargers lead, though. Short-lived because Waterville went on a 16-2 run led by attorney MVP Todd Birmingham who had 34 tonight. Senior Matt Nelligan had 25 points and a tournament record 24 rebounds. All Waterville the rest of the night. George Mardigan's Cannoneers 28-0 after capturing the New York State Federation Tournament 82-63 over Turner Carroll. All right, from one dominant team to another, UNLV steamrolled into the Final Four in the NCAA West region. All right, high school basketball season concluded yesterday, and it was another day, another title for the Waterville boys team up in Glens Falls. The Cannoneers trailed only once against Turner Carroll of Buffalo. It was 4-2. to From that point, they went on a 16-2 run to put the game away. Junior Todd Birmingham, the tournament MVP, had 34 points and a 19-for-19 effort. From the foul line, senior Matt Nelligan had 25 points at a tournament record 24 rebounds. The Cannoneers, state public school champions in Class C, became the first team ever from Section 2 to capture the Federation Tournament, ending a perfect season at 28-0. Joining me live tonight in our studios is uh, Waterville Elite head basketball coach George Mardigan. What a run, kind of like a dream season that has certainly come true for your team, George. It was a great season, Roger. Uh, it was a funny feeling today. We watched the film of the Federation game uh, at 3 o'clock today, and uh, at about 5 o'clock the kids were all done, and uh, I just had the feeling they wanted to go in the gym. Uh, uh, I've had people ask me, is there anything beyond this? And it really isn't uh, built into the system in New York State. But it's a fantastic year, fantastic group of kids. And a lot of your kids played football, and uh, Doug Dickinson, who is very accurate in these uh, in these categories. Says that you're the only uh, team in the state of New York that can boast of of two teams from Water Elite that went undefeated. The football team, a perfect season, and now the basketball team. Just a great run. Yeah, uh, the Livonia team from the Rochester area that we beat for the uh, public school uh, state title 
they had uh, won a regional football championship also, and they were undefeated in football, and uh, they were undefeated in basketball yeah. until, until we collided. Uh, so it's a it's an unbelievable honor for uh, for these kids that are, that are involved in the city of Water Valley. Uh, sure. Let's talk about this team a little bit. Uh, what made it special? I know that, you, that as a coach, you love to talk about defense and rebounding, and this team just dominated in both those phases. Uh, I think we played defense a little better maybe than the clip on Bill Lambeer a couple <laughs> minutes ago. Uh, he was super quick defensive team. These kids were just very, very quick and tenacious all the way through the lineup. Matt Nelligan broke a pretty good rebounder's uh, C record with Christian Leitner now at Duke. Uh, just did a fabulous job on the boards going into the game against Turner Carroll. Uh, I said I'd like them to out-rebound the opponent by 28 rebounds or more to rep one, one per victory that we had this season. Uh, and we out-rebounded them by 31. A real big, talented team, but uh, these kids just go after the basketball. And you certainly scored enough points. We're averaging just about 77, and we got 82 last night, so uh, we're a high-scoring team. Did you have a particular go-to guy or star on this team, or was this more of a balanced club this year? The starting lineup averaged in double numbers. Bill Williams, Scott Fruscio, uh, Todd Birmingham, Matt Nelligan, and Jordan Newbend. Jordan was the high scorer with 20 points a game, and uh, I don't know if I've coached a kid who's played uh, two dozen plus games uh, on such a consistent level uh, of excellence. Uh, I would say if we had a go-to man, it was Jordan, and uh, with the luxury of having four other weapons who could pick up the slack if he if he uh, failed to do so on a given occasion. And you know what they say after you win a state title, uh, what about next year, Coach? And I know that the Birmingham's coming back, but the others are not. That's true. We're losing seven seniors, um, four starters. Todd Birmingham is, a, is an excellent basketball player already, and he's a, he's a, a super kid to build a, a team around. Our JV team was a co-colonial council champion, our freshman team also, and our modified team came in second. So you'll be back? We'll be back. <laughs> okay, George. Hey, great run. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks.